After fully succumbing to the power of the Devil Gene, Jin Kazama becomes Devil Jin, a crazed, tormented shell of his former self, who delights in the suffering of his enemies. Devil Jin, as he exists in Tekken 7, though, is essentially a greatly watered down version of Tekken 3 Jin a classic legacy design who was the first character to wield the Electric Wind God Fist, which in conjunction with the Wave Dash still forms the basis of a Mishima game plan. Jin Kadama Wind. Out of the three Mishimas, Devil Jin lacks Kazuya's ruthless mix-ups or Heihachi's oppressive lockdown, but is the most balanced of them all. In this way, he's arguably the character that best represents Tekken as a whole. So with this video, we aim not just to make you a stronger Devil Jin player, but a stronger Tekken player. Playing Devil Jin is not easy. He requires a solid grasp on fundamentals, tight execution, adaptation, creativity, and a wealth of matchup knowledge to be successful with. At his full potential though, Devil Jin's rounded moveset has been a staple of high-level play for decades. Powerful space control thanks to Wave Dash and Electric Wind God Fist. Fantastic whiff punishment, both for major and minor mistakes. <laughs> A versatile set of pokes that complement his moveset very well. The weekend since season one, very threatening in mix ups. Annoying and surprisingly evasive panic moves. A full kit of damaging block punishment options. Explosive combo damage and far-reaching wall characters. Keep out tools are slow to recover on with and so easy to punish. High execution ceiling, which means many moves carry a risk of failure. Susceptible to being sidestepped, especially to the left. Doesn't have a fast, safe mid-launcher like the other Mishimas. Outside of combos, Devil Jin's ground damage is lacking. What do we mean by space control? In Tekken, your most powerful tool is movement. Unlike other fighting games, you can block while backdashing and cancel out of it at any time with either a move or more movement. The ability to sidestep also allows you to disrespect minor frame advantage for potentially a huge combo. So by space control, we really mean movement control. It is the character's ability to repress, discourage, and hem in the opponent's movement. And since movement is so powerful in Tekken, good space control is key for any strong character. Space control can effectively be broken down into three qualities. One, lateral space. These are homing moves or moves with strong tracking to stop sidestepping. Two, horizontal space, moves with enough range to reach a backdash. And three, pushback, 
the ability to push to the wall, where backdashing is no longer an option. This is one of the reasons running two type moves tend to be so strong, since even on block, they do a great job of forcing the opponents back to the wall. Due to the screw system, combos universally have much longer wall carry. So, coming into Tekken 7, many characters got innately stronger thanks to the system, and the value of a strong wall game became more important. Whereas characters like Nina or Lee, who used to specialize in wall carry, lost a key defining characteristic. So how does Devil Jin control space with a classic Mishima-style wave dash, executed by first tapping forward, secondly going into neutral, and lastly performing a quarter circle forward motion, and then repeating these three steps for a continuous wave dash? This sounds simple, but to achieve a fast and fluid wave dash requires a lot of practice. With every repetition of the wave dash, Devil Jin will automatically reorient with a sidestepping opponent, which makes it much harder to evade him laterally. Thanks to its sheer speed, it can also be used to push a well-conditioned opponent to the wall. But be careful, as you're left wide open the entire time. You can access any of Devil Jin's moves from a wave dash, but let's focus on two in particular. The Electric Wind God Fist, or EWGF, and Demon's Paw. These can both be stepped rather easily when used by themselves, but when combined with a wave dash, they become much more dangerous. The EWGF is a fast plus on block launcher with a huge hitbox. While there is an execution barrier, once mastered, it is without question one of the strongest and most versatile moves in Tekken. Due to its speed, if Devil Jin executes an EWGF from a dash at mid-range, he can often beat out reactionary keep-out moves before they even come out. Even on block, you're at a sizable advantage, both in terms of frames since you're left at plus 5, and also the pushback which forces the opponent towards the wall. EWGF's biggest weakness as a spacing tool is the fact that it's a high. Here is where you use the Demon's Paw, a fast, safe on block mid with considerable range that also boasts pushback. While it's quite negative on block, the pushback allows you to set up whiff traps against opponents who recklessly attack afterwards. Simply wave dashing in an opponent's face isn't going to work though. Lower level players tend to press a lot of buttons, and higher level players need a reason to respect you first. Despite its speed and tracking properties, the wave dash is quite telegraphed, and moves from it can easily be beaten out by a fast keep out move on reaction, such as a magic 4. So, we need to use movement to first bait the keep out move, and then whiff punish wave dash into the opponent's range, then back dash away while primed and ready to instantly EWGF once you see them flinch. As well as a spacing and pressure tool, EWGF is also your go-to whiff punisher. There's a simple yet effective rock-paper-scissors dynamic that lies at the heart of Tekken and just about any fighting game. Keep out beats rush down. If the aggressor recklessly goes in with a linear offense, this makes them quite easy to intercept. A good keep out tool typically has low whiff recovery and or range, making it hard to punish, doesn't push you forward, and ideally leads to a combo on hit. Good examples in Tekken are Magic 4s and generic down forward 2s. Baiting beats keep out. This entails first using movement to lure out the keep out move, usually by moving in and out, or in and then stopping, before whiff punishing as hard as you can. Depending on the game, whiff punishment can either be reactive or predictive, but generally it's a skill that lies somewhere in between the two, informed by how well you can pick up on your opponent's tendencies. 
In 3D fighters such as Tekken, you often have enough time to visually confirm a whiff and then punish. But this isn't always the case, as we'll see later. Don't feel as though you have to launch every whiff. Take what you can get, even if it's just momentum. And finally, rushdown beats baiting. So, if you're faffing around, moving in and out, trying to lure out a keep-out move, this opens you up to being pressured. Often, a good defensive player will sprinkle in some light pressure to keep an aggressor on their toes. And indeed, in a real match between skilled players, keep-outs, baiting, and rushdown are constantly overlapping. It has to be stated though, since Tekken 6 Bloodline Rebellion, EWGF itself no longer operates as an effective keepout tool since the whiff recovery was extended, making it easier to punish. This means that Mishima players are encouraged to play more aggressively. The exception here is regular Jin who can keep out very effectively with his front frost kick. Though this was made harder to convert off of while still maintaining a defensive position in Season 3. You can also set up whiff traps. EWGF on block doesn't really allow you to set up frame traps outside the wall due to the pushback. But with the frame advantage, you still have enough time to quickly dash in and out to bait moves. If they don't bite, simply continue pressuring. A similar, albeit weaker trap is set up after Demon's Paw. Simply backdash after and look for a whiff. So, by movement alone, we can set up big damage. But particularly defensive players will need more to bring them out of their shell, and this is where we need to employ the use of pokes. Pokes are fast and quick to recover on block allowing you to sidestep or use an evasive move after. When poking, there are two main objectives. 1. Chip away at an opponent's life bar. 2. Pressure them into making a mistake, which you can then punish heavily. The cornerstone of any effective poking game are jabs, down forward ones, and ideally a good high crush. Devil Jin is blessed with all three. The classic Mishima Flash Punch combo is one of the best jab strings in the game. This Jails is fully hit confirmable and on hit leads to a unique knockdown animation that sets up Devil Jin's powerful mix-up off of a wave dash. More on this later. Even on block, he's only at minus one, allowing you to comfortably sidestep and whiff punish counterattacks. The ideal whiff punisher here is, yes, EWGF. But at high levels of play, opponents generally won't make big mistakes and will play very compact, especially at this range. So, unless your execution is extremely good, EWGF might be too slow for practical use here. In which case, another flash punch combo is excellent for punishing minor whips. Since flash punch combo is a high, keep the opponent honest with downford 1, which is a fast mid. On block, this leaves you at minus 3, meaning you can sidestep many linear moves after, but not jabs. To discourage this, you can slightly delay and finish the twin lancer string, which is safe on block, but leaves you at a major disadvantage. Twin lancer also combos on counter hit, even when fully delayed, which is quite unusual for a mid-mid string of this type, though this does leave you open to jabs. <laughs> Alternatively, to evade jabs after a block down forward one, you can use Devil Jin's high crush moves. Malicious Mace is a moderately damaging low that gives you enough advantage on hit to make a while standing four uninterruptible and very hard to step for most characters, though it is a little slow. Down four is considerably faster, but doesn't allow you to continue your offense on hit. Both are minus 13 on block, meaning they can only be launched by a handful of characters. It's interesting to note that Kazumi can in fact evade jabs with a sidestep even after her downward one is blocked. This lethal combination of Mishima generics with superior movement is one of the main reasons she's so effective up close 
and, despite a glut of nerfs in Season 1, remains a mainstay of high-level play to this day. While Devil Jin's pokes have rather weak tracking, especially to sidestep left, he does have good options to discourage lateral movement. Laser Cannon is a natural mid-mid-string that's very hard to step, and though unsafe on block, he can threaten with the last hit of the string, which is safe but very linear. Devil Jin also has Last Rites, which is a high, but is fully homing, deals solid damage, behaves very similar to an EWGF on block, and wall splats. Both of these moves are also good options as for wave dash, especially last right, as it's so easy to perform. Another good option to use both from a wave dash and up close in poking sequences is the Demon Steel Pedal. This is a reasonably fast, safe mid that leads to a combo on counter hit, which is a golden combination. While it's quite negative on block, thanks to the pushback, you can even set up whiff traps similar to Demon Paw. Demon Steel Pedal is quite a bit slower than the Flash Punch combo or Twin Lancer, but use this to your advantage, as its sluggishness automatically creates a baked-in, timing-based mix-up when used in conjunction with your faster pokes. Once the opponent has been conditioned to sit still and block through effective movement and poking, now it's time to open them up with Devil Jin's powerful 50-50 mid-low mix-ups. A mix-up is, in its broadest sense, an ambiguous situation that requires an educated guess on the part of a defender to escape. Many actions could be described as a mix-up. For example, by merely varying the timing at when you unleash a move from a wave dash, you create a timing-based mix-up which, with the proper execution, is actually very effective in high-level play. For the purposes of this section though, we mean mix-up in its simplest form which is to say, fast mids and lows, which the opponent is forced to guess by either standing or crouching. Here, Devil Jin's mix-ups are quite skewed. On the one hand, he has the best hell sweep of all the Mishimas since it leads to a full combo. This means not only is it the most damaging, it can also completely shift the tide of a round by putting the opponent's back to the wall. On the other hand, Devil Jin has the weakest power mids of all the Mishimas, especially now that in Season 3 his Wraith Kick doesn't give a free Demon Steel pedal, which before led to some preposterous Oki. Unlike Kazuya, Heihachi, Jin, or even Kazumi, he also lacks a safe launching heal kick. While he does have an instant screw mid from a wave dash and while standing too, it's unsafe on block hard to execute and leads to less potential damage than a traditional launcher. This means that the risk-reward on Devil Jin's mix-ups favor him going for a low. So, on paper, crouching is more effective against him than other Mishimas. This is not to say that crouching is free or safe, however, and a smart Devil Jin player will even use this weakness to their advantage by plowing the opponent with mids and then going for that round-changing Hell Sweep when they least suspect it. <laughs> Panic moves are pretty self-explanatory. When under pressure, these are fast or evasive moves that can help you turn the tables. When it comes to speed, not much beats a jab, and here the Flash Punch combo is a good interrupt against pressure that isn't airtight. A down jab is also a decent option when under pressure, since it's both fast and evades highs, but do be careful as these can be low crushed, low parried, or sidestepped rather easily. Also, Devil Jin doesn't have strong mix-ups from Crouch, so you don't get much of a reward if it connects. Generally, aside from generic options like jabs, Mishimas are quite lacking in the panic move department and need to find their way out of pressure with fundamentals. Devil Jin has two trump cards though. In previous games, he had a Kazama-style counter, 
but for Tekken 7, this has been changed to Imperial Wrath, which is an interesting, albeit not particularly useful, hybrid between a Power Crush and a Counter. The armor activates at the same speed as a Counter at 3 frames, but even if you absorb an attack, there's no guarantee the electric discharge will connect, and the discharge itself is punishable on block. So, overall, it's a weaker move than before. The more useful panic move is the Samsara. This goes under highs and even some mids and leads to a full combo with the fly transition. Since Devil Jin can also do the Samsara by itself, this makes punishing it quite awkward. Punishers covering both options are few and far between. For characters who have one, dash to hop kick is a pretty good bet. <laughs> The universal max damage option for all characters is to simply run under Devil Jin's legs and launch him if he lands, or do a back turn combo if he goes into fly. But this is surprisingly fiddly and very unintuitive. All in all, this makes Samsara a powerful, often unpunished, get out of jail for free card, which is unique amongst Mishimas. Interestingly, though, EWGF is one of the best universal punishers right next to 2D characters' jump kicks. Despite repeated nerfs over the years and decades, Devil Jin remains a popular and powerful character at nearly all levels of play, and it's easy to see why. Despite some damage or safety being chipped off here or there, his moveset is just so rounded and complete that rarely does he find himself in a situation without the perfect tool to deal with it. While his true potential has only been unlocked by some of the finest players in the world, out of the three Mishimas, Devil Jin is both the easiest and most practical one to use, thanks to his more consistent punishment options and evasive panic moves. This makes a huge difference in high-pressure situations such as tournaments. For many years, there was really no reason to use Kazuya or Heihachi outside of character loyalty. But now that his Wraith Kick has been weakened in Season 3, Devil Jin finally has a flaw. He has the weakest power mids of all the Mishimas. Alongside his top tier Hell Sweep, this skews Devil Jin's mix ups towards going for a low, which is the exact opposite of Heihachi, and the most ambiguous 50 50s belong to Kazuya. In terms of safety and overall utility, though, Many players agree that Devil Jin still reigns on top. He truly is a complete package, with a balanced moveset geared towards aggression. Alternatively, if you're looking for a balanced, more defensive playstyle that's still centered around Mishima style wave dashing and electrics, Jin with his parry and front thrust kick might be more to your liking. <laughs> Do it!